So um, this one's question six from the first homework. And again, I don't really need my graphing calculator for this because everything is pretty much given to me. But let's see what they want me to think about here. So look at this. This is a, you know, a small table. There's not a crap ton of data <laughs> for this. Pair data, right? And I always ask everyone to think about what would be your X and what would be your Y if it's not told to you. The following table shows retail sales in drug stores in billions of dollars in US for the year since 1995. So I would expect this to act like my X and this to act my, like my Y because, you know, which one is dependent on which one? You know, Y is always dependent on X. If you remember back in algebra, if you're ever trying to find a point on a graph, you basically pick an X and you solve for Y, right? That was what we did back in the good old days. Somebody's unmuted. I don't know who it is. Um, but uh, but but that's that's because your X is your independent. Y is dependent on what you chose for X. So Y is your in, uh, your dependent variable and X is your independent variable. So in this case, the retail sales is dependent on the year that we're talking about. Um, now, they gave me the equation, thank you very much. Let S of T be the retail sales in billions of years, um, in T since 1995, a linear model for this data is. I think they may have made a little typo from S of T versus F of T. Either way, you see that T is like my X, T and F of T, the outcome, the sales, probably they meant S of T, but is the outcome, the sales based on the time. Now, remember that T is uh, years since 1995. So when T is zero, we're talking about 1995. If T was one, then that's one year since 1995, that's 1996. Right, if T were two, that's two years past 1995, that's 1997. Now, I don't have to find the equation they gave it to me, but this looks like a good, well, like, here you go. Use the above scatter plot to decide whether the linear model fits the data. Well, there you go. That would be the ultimate question. Does this fit the data well? Because if I use it to predict outcomes, is it going to be good for my set? Now, you guys are not even going into all the errors that can happen based on prediction. You just have to predict. You don't have to deal with all that extra stuff, which comes maybe in the next kind of statistics course, if you continue in statistics, if you want, which you don't have to, I'm not, but you, if you want. I would say that this is a pretty good prediction because if you look at the line, it goes pretty much through, you know, this random scatter plot, which is almost perfectly linear. And you see the line goes through almost like three of these points. So this is definitely a good model for the data because the line is almost basically the data not exactly right this one's not exactly on the line but this one's not exactly on the line but it's really good i would say this had a sh very strong linear correlation strong positive i would expect my r to be very close to positive one if i were to find it which i well, don't have to but I, that's what i'm expecting right notice the slope is 9.44 which is a positive slope because it's a line increasing. Um, estimate, here you go. Okay, estimate. They're saying estimate because you can't say exactly it's an estimate because this line is not perfect. Not all the data is on the line, but it's pretty good estimation. Estimate the retail sales in US in 2016. So 2016. Um, if I'm talking about the year 2016, I have to figure out how many years since 1995 that is. And that's not hard. You can literally go to your calculator and say, well, 2016 minus 1995 is how many, uh, how many years difference? 21. So <clears throat> because we're talking about the year 2016, T represents years since 1995. That's important because we're not plugging 2016 into the equation. We're plugging 21. When T is 21, what would be my outcome? What would be F of T? So you have it given to you. F of T is 9.44 T plus 84.182. Um, I'll call this A, just so you can refer. 
So how do I find f of t if I know t? Plug it in. All right, 9.44 times 21 plus 80. Plug and chug, as they say. <laughs> plug and chug. 9.44 times 21. And then plus 84.182 is equal to 282.422. Now, how do I want to round? Um, if I look at this, right? Being that all my retail sales have three di three decimals to the right, uh, four, oops, four, two, two. Don't write the wrong thing like I just did. Four, two, two. If I look at all the retail sales here, they all have three digits digit to the right of the decimal. So if they don't tell me how to round, I'm gonna assume that I should round the same as they have in the data set. So I'm gonna go 282.422 billions of dollars. Call that part A. We'll call this part B. Um, predict again. Anytime they talk about predicting, I'm going straight to this equation, always. Anytime you're asked to predict something, go to your equation. That's what you're using to predict anything. But now let's see, use the model to predict the year. If I wanna predict the year, then that means I'm trying to figure out T. What is T? T represents the year. That corresponds to retail sales of $250 billion. So find T when this is given. Most of the time you don't have to actually do this version because most of the time they're giving you the X. But in this case, they want the T all right, you got to do a little algebra here to solve for T. <laughs> 84.182. So I got to isolate T. If I want to isolate T, I have to move this first. So we call it inverse operation to move it over, right? And you can use your calculator, 250 minus 84.182. Make sure you can see what you're doing here. Mine's a little sloppy. 165.818 is equal to 9.44 T. I didn't do anything with that yet. Being that I want T to be isolated and T is being multiplied by 9.44, my inverse operation is division. Once I divide by 9.44, it cancels. I get one T, which is T, which is what I want. And then I don't know what that is. 165.818. 818 divided by 9.44, right? Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. And I get 17.565. Can I uh, ask you where you got the 250? Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> it's right here. Find T when... Oh! They gave it to me. Yeah, they gave it to me. Find T when um, retail sales is 250. <laughs> Thank you. I was looking everywhere. So, I mean, if you think about it, if they ask you to predict, most of the time they're going to give you the T, you find the Y, but sometimes they could give you the Y and ask you to find the T because, you know, and at the end of the day, I could predict either one dependent on what I want to know. Um, now, remember that your T represents years since 1995. So let me add that to 1995 to determine the year in which this is occurring. And it looks like it's in the year 2012, you know, maybe in the middle of 2012, 2012.565. So 2012 oops, is the year in which $250 billion would be based on our approximation from our line, the year 2012. Is it perfect? No, because again, this is an approximation because the line is just an, a representation of the data, but it is not exactly the data. I'm going to say, you know, if I'm expecting, let's say this is my, I don't know, whatever, my business or whatever, and I'm like, I want to make $250 billion. How long is it going to take me? Approximately, now I know, I'm by 2012. But let's say I want to go faster than cool. Like, now I'm going to do something to go faster than that. So, um, be careful with this part too, where they where they tell you like years since. So the T is not exactly the value that's given here. You know, that's not the exact year, if that makes sense. You have to actually deal with the fact that it's from 
1995 in, in my example. So here. <clears throat> 